Hey guys, and welcome to my studio. I mean, I call it my studio, but it's really just where I keep all my stuff. Today we're gonna try to do something really cool called, what's it called? What's it called? Come on. Light painting. Light painting is actually really, really cool because all this time in all these tutorials, I've been telling you guys the one most important thing about every setup you do is what? Light, I told you. But this time it's a little bit different. How is it different, you might be asking? Well, it's different because instead of having all of that glorious natural light that we're supposed to be counting on, look at all the natural light I see. We're gonna be working in the dark. <laughs> I'm so scared. If anything happens to me, tell my students I'm gonna miss some of them. We won't be working completely in the dark, of course, but we're going to have so much control over our light that we're literally going to use it like a paintbrush. So instead of filling a whole big space with light, it's just a tiny little area, whatever areas we specifically want. So what do we need? Most importantly, of course, we need a camera. And we need a tripod. You cannot do this without your tripod. You must, you must use, use a, tripod a tripod because you don't want your subject matter to be blurry. You want to be able to move the light, but not the objects. Another thing you're going to want to do is set your camera to manual focus. So dig out your instructions, go online, find a tutorial, something if you don't already know, and change your camera setting to manual focus. Now we have to get our camera set up. So the first thing you're going to want to do, set that mode dial to manual mode. Manual mode. Do not use auto mode. But auto mode is so easy. You're right, it is easy. But you can't do it because you have to have complete control over everything to do this kind of photography. So we're gonna start out with the most basic kind of light painting and it's really simple. If you get some lights like these, or these, you can do some really cool stuff too. Because the thing is, while that shutter's open, as long as you're moving around, it won't capture you, it'll only capture the light. And we'll start out with about a 25 second shutter speed, F16, and about 100 ISO. And that's where we'll start. So take your light and just move it around. And these guys are little finger lights. So do the same thing. Okay, so now we're gonna try something else. I got these cool little robot things, and we're gonna try something really neat using these things here. These are awesome little like neon tube things. You can buy them at Dollarama. Get everything at Dollarama. Again, like a buck and a quarter, and you can do really cool stuff. So I've got my stuff in place. I've got everything framed up the way I want it. Okay, I've got everything ready to go. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my lights and then I'm going to take my shots. But what I'm gonna do is while I'm taking my shots, I'm gonna wiggle this neon light around and you're gonna end up with something really kind of weird and wild. I'm gonna do it a little shorter duration of time. And I'm going to try something else. And that ended up looking pretty cool. So now we're gonna try something a little more complicated, a little more sophisticated, and don't worry if it takes a few tries to get it right. It's all about trial and error. So, what do we need? We need a subject, we need something to put the stuff out on so that we have a surface to work with, and we need different kinds of light. So you can see here, guys, that I've just set up these old wrenches. And I use these old wrenches just because they kind of have like lots of cool little surfaces and textures and things like that. They're a little bit reflective, but a little bit not. So I'm gonna try just a regular flashlight. By the way, you can get this kind of stuff for like two bucks a piece or something like that. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money. And I'm gonna use one of these. This is a cool little thing. It's a cube light and it's really neat and it goes up to like nine different brightness settings and so on. And this is really cool because first of all, it's rechargeable and it comes with a bunch of little cool filters and things. They are about 40 bucks. You can buy them on Amazon, but they're really cool and really handy. So in our settings, we're gonna have a 15 second shutter speed, aperture at around 16 and our ISO is gonna be 100. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use 
this guy right here. So I'm all focused up, I'm gonna turn off my lights, I'm gonna hit the shutter button, I've got 15 seconds to move my light around. Let's see what happens. Now that shot is way too bright. Let's try it again. And this time I'm going to try my cube light. Still pretty bright. Okay guys, sometimes this is what happens. It's just all about experimentation. I want to use my cube light. There's too much of it. It's going, it's going everywhere. everywhere. So I want to pinpoint it a little bit more. So, how do you do that? You make something called a snoot. A snoot is like this little tube that you put over your lens and it's like a cone and it pinpoints the light. Now you can buy them and they're expensive. If you've got some black construction paper and some tape, you can make one. So here's my snoot and now it's just a pinpoint. Let's try it again. Now we're cooking. Now things are really starting to look up. Let's try one more. I'm just making sure we're covering all of the areas that we want. It's really starting to look good. So you just keep trying, you keep experimenting, play with your light, play with the volume of light, try making a snoot and create those little pinpoints. And make sure you try different shutter speeds. You'll get it. But it does take time, it does take patience, and it takes experimentation. Go to the dollar store, grab some stuff from the classroom if you're taking this in the class, grab the things around your house. There's no shortage of ideas, it's all up here. So have fun, and I can't wait to see what you got.